medicine, but about these other views. Now, Andresia Puharak is a scientist who holds more than 50 medical patents. And he, too, is contacted and now follows what the spirits tell him. He has written, I am personally convinced that superior beings from other spaces and other times have initiated a renewed dialogue with humanity. While I do not doubt their existence, I do not know what they look like, how they live, or even what their goals are with respect to humankind. But then he says, considering that I have had two years of intermittent experience of contact with them, that's the spirits, I am remarkably ignorant about these beings. On the other hand, I have complete faith in their wisdom and benevolent intentions toward men and living things on the earth. My lack of hard knowledge about them is a kind of deficiency that does not erode my faith in their essential pursuit of the good, the truth, the beautiful, and the just. Now, these doctors are coming out with new ideas and recommending them to their patients. And they're doing it not on the basis of careful medical research, but because they've had a mystical experience and they're receiving information from spirits. You remember Robert Mueller, who was a former assistant to the Secretary General of the United Nations? Well, he wrote a book in which he included information that he had received from his spirit guide. Transpersonal psychologist Ken Wilbur has been dubbed by some the Einstein of consciousness research. He too has picked up information from the spirits. In the field of education for our children today, Jack Canfield is the past president of the Association for Humanistic Education. He's been a consultant to over 150 school systems. He's been on the universities and mental health organization boards, and he is currently president of Self-Esteem Seminars, which boasts over 400 school districts in the United States as his clients. He's the author of numerous books and articles on education, such as A Hundred Ways to Enhance Self-Concept in the Classroom, and also Self-Esteem in the Classroom. Jack Canfield speaks in over 250 public schools every year. He says that one of the most important aspects of education is to help students contact their own spirit guide. Another well-known educator today is Gene Houston. In fact, Gene Houston was the keynote speaker at the 1989 conference for the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, which met in Orlando, Florida. Now, over 6,000 educational curriculum developers, these are the guys that write the school books, were present to hear her. She served on the faculties of psychology and philosophy of religion at New York University, the University of California, and Columbia University. In 1985, she was awarded the Distinguished Educator of the Year Award in the United States. Now, what does this top educator think that our students need to discover? What did she tell the 6,000 curriculum developers in Orlando? Well, she said that she wants students to be taught guided imagery, which she says takes them down deep into their own body, and eventually will be able to discover a door behind which someone who understands all about them a wise being who can become a powerful ally for them will be discovered. Now, of course, this is a spirit guide. In fact, Jean Houston advocates students and adults learn how to contact their own spirit guide in her book, Mind Games. It was co-authored with her husband, Robert Masters, of Masters and Johnson's sex researchers fame. In this book, she tells people how to contact a group spirit, how to enter a conversation with it, now, there are many other educators just like Jean Houston all across America who receive information from the spirits and are trying to write curriculums for your children so that your children will be able to meet spirit guides as well. Now, we list many of these educators in our new book entitled Thieves of Innocence. And if you're interested, in our Facts on the New Age Movement book, we document the leading personalities from many different backgrounds who now admit that they're receiving information from spirits and are passing that information on to the public. But here's the point. The Bible, 1900 years ago, predicted that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Why? 
They'll give heed to seducing spirits. And it's happening today. Now, the third characteristic that the Bible gives concerning the people and false religion of the last days is that people will not only be seduced or misled by evil spirits, but they will give heed to doctrines of demons. Now, what does this mean? Well, here we're not talking about demon possession. No, it's talking about the thousands and thousands of perfectly normal people who have come to believe religious truths which they think are true but which are false and actually originated with the demons. Now, the Apostle Paul warned all Christians that we're to stay true to the gospel. You remember where he wrote, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be eternally condemned. Let him be accursed. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. Similarly, Jesus said, Do not be deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 said that we should watch out for men who are false apostles, deceitful workmen, who will masquerade as apostles of Christ. In the Bible he says, No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Well, today the spirits are presenting themselves to political leaders, Hollywood stars, scientists, doctors, and they're all saying that they're angels of light, loving entities who are only interested in the welfare of humanity. But the Bible warns us that Satan himself does this, and we're not to be deceived. On the other hand, as drastic as that is, there will be more people who believe false doctrine than who have actual contact with the spirits themselves. The Bible says that the religious doctrine that people will believe will really originate with the demons who, according to the Bible, will speak lies and hypocrisy. Now, are there any examples of this today? Let me give you a couple. The book that's been on the newsstands in past days called God Calling by A.J. Russell was actually on the evangelical bestseller list for two whole years. Jonathan Livingston Siegel, written by Richard Bach, and the three-volume A Course in Miracles by Helen Shuckman were bought by many Christians. In fact, Jonathan Livingston Siegel sold more than 25 million books worldwide. And Helen Shuckman's A Course in Miracles sold over 500,000 books. But even though these books were bought and read by many Christians, all three of these books were dictated by spirits to the authors. Now, that's true. The books themselves deny the biblical Jesus and contradict many doctrines in the Bible. Yet all three of these books, dictated by spirits, were ignorantly accepted by many Christians in the churches today. Now, what are some examples of doctrines of demons? Well, there are four lies that Satan used on Adam and Eve way back in the Garden of Eden that are still believed by many people today. Let's read Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Genesis 3 says, Now the serpent, that's the devil, was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, and here's lie number one, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? In other words, God lied to you, Eve. You don't really think that he meant that, do you? And many people today, they would say something like this. You don't think there's really a hell that God would send people to hell, do you? God couldn't really be against adultery in certain circumstances. I mean, abortion.